Ken Weaves with us of uh, Kenny and Rennie. You can uh, check out his work over at sportsnet.ca. Just one more thing on the Jets going forward. And I mean, as I said, that thorough audit is going to be, I mean, we're going to talk coaching. We're going to talk mm-hmm. personnel. Uh, and I imagine, listen, I had not thought, I was always of the opinion that, you know, I think that coaching change is very likely considering the way this season has gone. But I didn't really subscribe to the fact that maybe it could be a complete overhaul, including the general manager. And I don't know, maybe it's just the the way that that game went and the way this season has been trending. But um, when you look at Chevy's situation right now, how safe do you think that he is? I mean, uh, how much will that be part of uh, the audit, do you think? Well, it's got to be certainly part of the discussion, us, because like you said, when you're doing a thorough audit, as Darren suggested, I mean, it goes from the top down. So you're going to be looking at everything from drafting to, you know, free agent signings to trades that were made and and all of those things. I mean, um, we know the circumstances were challenging during COVID, but at the same time, it's year, season number 11 and the Jets have three playoff victories in those 11 seasons. So um based on the talent level and what we thought was an upward trajectory of the personnel and roster, I would say that three playoff victories would be considered to be a disappointment. And I would say that Kevin Chemeldayoff would be probably nobody more disappointed than him that they haven't been able to continue that upward trajectory, especially after last year, us where the jets, you know, won around again, and it looked again, like they've improved the roster. Now it's another step backwards. So how is that viewed by Mark Chipman and, and company? I mean, that only Mark can answer that question, but um, I would say that, I mean, it, it comes down to philosophy and belief. I mean, we know that Mark Chipman believes in Kevin Shevel day off, but um, at some point they're going to have to decide if, if that's the direction that they want to go. And I mean, too, Huss, I mean, we talked last week about exit meetings. I mean, so Kevin Shevel day off is going to be having some serious conversations with Mark Chipman and honestly, Huss, I think some some of his direction and vision would impact his future of the with the hockey club as well. Don't you agree? I mean, oh, yeah. if he if he thinks you know what we know for sure is that the status quo is not good enough. So if Kevin has ideas on how to make that status quo different, I think Mark will be open to it. And, but I mean, if if he doesn't like what he hears, I mean. Like you said, everything is under review. So I think that that will certainly be part of the discussion. But uh, there's a lot of things that are, you know, the trickle down effect. And and again, it it comes down to philosophy and and where they believe where they're at and where what they need to do in order to get to the next place. Because Huss, like we talked about, I mean, one of the biggest things in terms of personnel this offseason is very simple. Can the Jets win in this two year window? where Mark Shifley, Blake Wheeler, and Connor Hellbuck are under contract, or will they be doing everything in their power to widen that window to try to win during the Nikolai Ehlers, Kyle Connor, Josh Morrissey, their window, which is a little bit wider based on ter- length of contract. So uh, that to me is sort of where, where things start. And as you said, I mean, it starts at the top. I mean, if Mark Chipman continues to believe in Kevin Cheveldayoff's vision, then he will continue to be the general manager. Uh, if he thinks there needs to be a change in philosophy or direction, then they'll consider a change. In some ways, the difficult decisions we know are going to come at the end of the season. And yeah. it was interesting hearing Darren Drager report this week that, you know, from talking to people inside the organization, that there will be a, I believe his quote was a full audit of the thorough. entire, a thorough <laughs> audit of the entire operation. and. Listen, I mean, I think that obviously is, um, you know, maybe what some would say overdue. The bottom line is it's going to happen at the end of the year. But here we are. They're going to play this game tonight, and then they've got 10 games left in the regular season. Ken, what are you looking for? What do you think will happen? And what is the be- what's the best thing that could come out of these final 11 games in a lost season for the Jets? Yeah, I mean, you find out about where things are at with certain people. I mean, and again, we understand this. This is like after, you know, not the equivalent, but you can understand when people have trouble getting up for the bronze medal game after you get your heart, you know, ripped out of you out of you in a semifinal. So it's not exactly the same, but it would be similar. So guess what? I mean, don't just go out and go through the motions if you're the Winnipeg Jets. I mean, that's the thing for me. And yeah, I mean, people talk about Calgary and how they got more committed defensively. I mean, the Jets are not going to become a defensive juggernaut in the last 11 games here. That, that If people think that they're just fooling themselves. But 
you can start showing the commitment required and you can start showing that you care about puck management and you you're being conscientious in terms of when you're taking risks and when you are making the smart easy play off the boards or you know getting the puck deep in some of those things so i mean does it matter if the jets go 10 and 1 i mean does that make any difference for next year no but you want to see the effort being put forth us like you talked about earlier don't just go through the motions and don't get embarrassed right i mean this is these are guys that have a lot of pride you know pride in the jersey pride in being an nhl player and all that so i don't expect the jets to be sleepwalking through these games but i mean if there are guys that are banged up a bit yes give those younger guys a chance um, to show what they can do and again it's not to say that it makes a humongous difference, but it will help their confidence and comfort and all of those things that, you know, Dylan Sandberg was talking about this morning. I mean, this is a guy who's had a frustrating year mentally. I mean, day one of, you know, camp, you get a high ankle sprain. I mean, that's a tough way to go. And then right when it looks like you're starting to become a regular at the NHL level, you hurt your hand. I mean, um, that's tough. But again, guess what? What did he do about it? He went back, he did the, did the work got healthy, went to the moose, played well, earned a recall. I mean, it's easy to just say, you know, the season is a write-off, forget about it, see you next, uh, you know, can't wait for my summer training. But if you're one of the guys on the periphery of the roster, Huss, or if you're part of the leadership group, or if you're part of that second wave of leaders who want to move into leadership roles, this is your time to shine. This is your time to show you want to be part of the solution in terms of getting things back on track. And you want to help some of those young guys, you know, help themselves as well. So, um, yeah, I, I get it. I mean, people want to, you know, apathy is an interesting, uh, you know, <laughs> interesting subject. We know there's anger. Then the line between apathy and anger is very narrow. But if you're a player, don't show apathy, right? I, I want you to show, and again, you can't just show anger in terms of pouting and saying, forget it, it's over. But, I mean, these are games are tough to get up for. But guess what? It's your job to get up for the games. And I expect the Jets will not just will play out the string and and roll over against tough teams. But at the same time, sorry, Huss, it's a long-winded way of saying, I think there is still something to play for whether the Jets are mathematically eliminated or not. And let's be honest, Huss, there are certain guys on the roster that won't be part of the Jets. So whether you're an elite player or a guy looking for a new deal, you better not sleepwalk through these last few games or you're going to have trouble getting a new contract.